Hi everyone, it's Monday again. Nice to see you. I uh, hope everybody's well. We had a nice weekend. We had our office party, office Christmas party on Friday, which went well. Only a small number, just the four of us, but uh, we made up for for that those numbers with uh, a lot of fun. So that was good. And then uh, we had a skiing get together on the Saturday. So that was my two sisters and their families uh, just uh, going over what's required for skiing. I'm going to be honest, I, I've forgotten. It's 15 years ago since I've gone. So they're telling me all the things I need and how it's changed and how you don't need any money now. You do it all by your card and scanning things and you wear helmets. So uh, we've got to get ready for that. So it's exciting. We're also changing everything on the site. We're finishing off with a couple of doubling hands that I've been sent in on this one, but then we're moving on to four, 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 one hands for this month. That's February coming up tomorrow, of course. And uh, on the Fridays, we're going li to take a little look at the American system just to familiarize with ourselves with it. Um, some of you may never play against it. That's going to be quite rare. It's usually the odd, I have to say, there's usually the odd pair that will play five card majors in any given club, if not quite a few more. If you play online at all, you know, you might just fancy, I, I suppose you might fancy the odd game by yourself, a solitaire game or something like that, in which case you need to know it on BBO particularly. So, um, you know, so uh, hopefully that will help. We'll have a little look at the robots as well. Um, yeah, we'll have a little look at the robots as well. So what's coming up? Well, of course, uh, I'm on holiday soon, so that's coming up. Uh, that's next week, middle of next week we're going. Um, I've just got to have someone prep something, but we'll probably still do the, the Wednesday will probably be a pre-record of the pairs game. So this Wednesday we're playing teams, of course. <laughs> this Wednesday we're playing teams. Uh, and then um, the, the Wednesday after, hopefully, I'll put out the pre-record I've got of, of the pairs that we played some time ago. And then we will see. Uh, and then there'll be a, a complete, uh, I think it's nine days of off. And then I come back via the Isle of Wight. Because I've got the Isle of Wight coming up. Um, yeah, I've got the Isle of Wight coming. And um, we shall see. I don't know how far away we'll be from you, Mark, out there. So, uh, but uh, my brother-in-law lives in Switzerland, so he's he's going to a little do out there as well, and he'll be with us. So, what am I doing? Uh, we've got the hand evaluation. Don't forget, it's not a hand evaluation anymore. At the moment, we're just trying to guess the hands, as it were. We're going to see an auction and guess the hands. In terms of holidays, well, lots on the site. Um, I will. I pretty hopeful before I go away have got lots more events for you but I haven't got them yet at the moment we're still looking at the March and the April ones uh, and of course there's there's room on Cornwall even in March which was sold out but quite a few cancellations so if anybody wants to join us in the beginning of March both me and Will are doing a couple of events there five day events down in Falmouth so do look out for those um, and we're hopeful that the cruises will be getting going nice and strongly soon enough. It's still perhaps a tiny bit early. We've, we've had a couple of cruises, but they were sort of still, um, they're still um, having, you know, bubbling at the moment, but hopefully that will change soon enough. I think it'll change at the same rate as, as the disease itself changes, the status of the disease. I think at some point that might change. OK, well, I tell you what, let's go to Q+. Now, I'll let you familiarise yourself with this, with this because, of course, you're looking at no cards at all. Um, you are looking at no cards at all here. And there's a good reason. And that reason is we're going to see an auction and we're going to try and work out what the cards are. So North starts with one spade. South responds one no chump. And North bids two spades. Okay. Now it gets rather surprising because South bids three hearts and then North bids four hearts. 
and that ends the auction. So I want you to try to predict what you think those hands are. Okay, and we'll come back to that after our little seminar. So have a little think about that. And see what you think. Okay, I'll leave you with that while we... I've just got to go back to the start there, while we go back to that. So, I should tell you that if, if you predict the hands, it, it will be uh, exactly as you expect. Uh, so it is, the, it is good bidding. So don't think it's, a, it's an auction that's based around bad bidding. It is, it is good bidding and you've got to try and work out why they're doing it. Okay. Okay, so let's go to the PowerPoint. We're just gonna revise what we've done then over the last month. And then we'll look at two hands that got sent in. Okay. <laughs> So defending against doubled contracts, what we said was, first and foremost, we want to have been in doubled, and thank you for everybody who's, who's, who's tried to double a bit more this month. Don't get me wrong, I want you to double more all of the time, but to try and get in the habit in January is, is great. So trumps are really, really important with regard to doubled contracts. They really are. You've got to judge the best thing to do. So when both opponents have trump length, we need to draw trumps to stop them roughing, we said. And when the defender with strong trump, so you've doubled perhaps for takeout, maybe it goes two spades, pass, pass, you double for takeout, pass, pass, pass. The chances are your partner's got good trumps sitting over the person who's bid. So there again, leading a trump can work well because it goes through declarer and helps draw the cards. The other way around, it's not always gonna work so well if, if I'm sitting underneath the player. But of course, there will still be times where playing trumps is right. Maybe I've got queen, jack, 10, nine of trumps and my job is to knock out the ace and king and then draw the rest. Because if you can do that, you can save a lot of tricks. We're talking about quite often the difference, if you can get the play right, the difference between 800 and 200 or 500 and 100. Um, and getting, the more you double, the more you practice defending. And it is, the, the tactics that are used are very interesting because they're not like normal contracts. It often ends up right at the end of the hand. We saw one last week, one of the examples that was sent in where essentially you nearly got end played because you hadn't played, maybe drawn trumps if you don't play trumps at all. Um, so very subtle. When, when, when do we not play trumps? We did this a couple of weeks ago. We said, basically, sometimes you need to take top tricks. I mean, usually that's when you look at dummy and dummy's got a very good suit. And so you need to take your tricks before they get discarded. And crucially, when you're going for a rough. Um, now, sometimes when you are the doubler with the long trumps, you're looking at trumps like maybe ace, queen, nine, seven. Now, in theory, the nine and seven may not be worth a trick. Uh, or ace, queen, eight, seven, I suppose is a better one. Ace, queen, eight, seven. In theory, if declare has got king, jack, ten, nine, he can draw your queen and ace and then knock out your eight and eight. But by getting people to lead them to you, you can maybe uh, get a trump promotion. Um, and those can be crucial. Or you can maybe get your partner to rough with his doubleton trump and his uppercut helps. And we've seen this a number of times. We saw this, I think, last week. A uh, very nice example where I think we had a Queen Doubleton in Trumps and by waffing with the Queen we were able to establish a trick for our partners. Ten. You never know. You're not quite sure what you're trying to do in terms of establishment. You don't know what he's got. But having that in your mind can make a lot of difference. OK, that's enough on that. What I'm going to do is I've got to go back here because I've got the examples and they are in. This was sent in by Ishbel Clark uh, from, from Scotland. And we'll have a look at it and see how we get on. Um, so North is the opening bidder. Do uh, readjust your screens if it's a bit, bit blurred. Um, 
You sometimes have to use the cog, I think, for that. So here, North was the dealer. Let's see how the auction will go. And both hands today are gonna, we're gonna see the, the, the need for judgment when we're thinking about doubling the opponents, okay? Because it can be tricky. So let's have a look. So it went past from North and a normal one heart opening. And I think a normal two club overcall there. Um, I think you're just too, I think you're, well, you're too strong for a weak jump overcall there. Okay, you're too strong for a weak jump overcall. So I think two clubs is right from South. And then how do you think the auction might go on after that? I think probably I would just pass with the West hand. Remember, I, like, I have to say I like double. I like double to promise four spades. So it's not ideal having that because it doesn't, you know, there's hands like here with eight points you want to make a bid. So you pass. North passes, which I think is reasonable probably. And then it goes two diamonds, all very peaceful at the moment. <laughs> now at the table, it, carry, it carried on going peacefully. South didn't bid. So it went pass two hearts and it carried on going peacefully um it just carried on and so again john i don't like a negative double because that for me promises four in the unbid major really important to me that okay you don't have to play it that way but that's the way i teach and the way most people teach that if there's an unbid major if you use a negative double it promises four cards in the in the and it's important so that partner can always raise with four you see so generally it works best there's some hands you get a bit left behind so it goes two hearts from west now now east probably has to pass that that's the difficulty i think you've got to make the decision in this auction whether you want to play in three clubs double yeah, I don't mind that. Two hearts on the first round. It's quite a nice hand. That's the problem. Yeah, I mean, two hearts on the very first hand round. One heart, two clubs. You could dredge up two hearts. But it's so flat. I'm not sure I don't mind pass. Anyway, East passed this. And now it got a bit murky. Because it went three clubs from South. What do you fancy with the West hand? The reason it got murky is because not unreasonably, West is thinking, surely we've got the majority of the points. You know, I've got eight points, partners made two bids by themselves, and I've got four clubs. So I think double is reasonable here. It then went pass. Can I just say South's bid wasn't reasonable. If South wants to bid three clubs, South should have bid three clubs on the previous round before they find a fit, if that makes sense. Hmm, now it's tricky because the difficulty is when you're sitting east here is that in a way it's a good news that you've got a void in clubs because partner could have huge number of clubs but the bad news is that you can never lead trumps which could be very important and clearly your hand is a five loser hand playing if it's got a fit so I think it's quite close I think, it, I, I, do you know, at the table, I would probably pass as well. Uh, the other option is to bid three diamonds. And what that promises is it promises five, five. And you would feel that you often have a fit because often with three do. So it's, it's a very close call at the table. It went pass. Um, and that wasn't a great success. I, because I, I mean, but with careful defense, you've got a chance, I think. Um, but it's, you've got to be really careful. And I think De Clara might be able to end play West anyway here. Um, I, so it's a really, and the problem is, I mean, the problem is, is three clubs. I mean, if you were vulnerable, if, if the North South were vulnerable, doubling three clubs is probably worth the risk because you're going to get 200 for a complete top. The problem here is that even if you get three clubs doubled off, are you getting a good score? That's the problem. 
<laughs> but it's difficult for East. It's all in good thinking East should bid here. But sometimes West is sitting there with... I mean, North South has got very lucky to find partner with three card club support, an ace and a king, and a doubleton in the right place. I mean, South has got the most gorgeous dummy you could ever imagine. Okay, and in fact, I would feel that North should have bid three clubs. Okay, North should have been competing over two hearts, although his hearts are quite good, I can see that, but he's sitting under. I think, I think North should be bidding three clubs in this auction. Um, however, because South bid it, it, it murk, murk, murkies the water, <laughs> murk. It blurs the waters, it really does. And, and, and so what would the defense be? I think you'd lead the Queen of Diamonds. I mean, let's just see how we get on. Um, I mean, I, I just don't think you're ever going to be able to stop. You know that, I mean, to be honest on the auction, assuming your opponents are sane, South must have six clubs here. So I do not think that you can stop dummy roughing a diamond here. So I would be tempted just to carry on playing diamonds. You could switch to hearts. I don't mind which. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I think you could lead the jack of clubs, but I, I, I think there's no way you can draw the trumps because once you've played the jack of clubs, you can't lead another club. So I think I'd just play diamonds. I'd, I'd just continue with diamonds. So let's do it. And let, you know, take, take entries away from dummy. So what does Declara do now? Um, I think Declara would struggle to get this right. Um, the only way Declara, I think, can do it is if Declara has to rough two hearts here. Okay, um, which I think is pretty tough. I think most Declaras at this point will probably try and draw one trump. Um, maybe they think you've got the, the double is the wrong bid, so I think they might. And that, I think, might give us a chance to defeat the contract. So let's see. So what can Declara do now? Um, well, Declara might still be able to do it. I mean, I, this is tough Declara play, but in theory, you lead to the ace, you rough a club, so you rough a heart. You play a small spade to the king, which happens to win, and then you off another heart. I think this is tough play, though, surely. Um, and obviously, the idea here is that Declara can now end play West. If you're playing against a Declara that gets this right, I think. You're unlucky, but I, I, I'll just show you how the, that the hand actually finishes. It would go king of clubs, queen of clubs. And now, of course, Declarer can exit with a club, but that, whew, yeah. I mean, if, as I say, if they get that right against you, um, I think you can be hard done by. Okay, and Declarer makes the last trick with the queen. And that, so that's three clubs doubled on making. I have to say, I think more probable is that Declare will probably draw a few trumps. So let's just change it slightly. Declare will play on spades or something. So let's say Declare just draws the trumps. This is more likely, I think. Um, okay, Declare probably plays on spades here. and tries another spade, I suppose, and ducks it. And I think that's more likely, and Declara will go one off. Okay, I think that's not unreasonable. So the, the only problem with the hand, and I'm just gonna claim and get to the end there, sorry, is that even if you get it one off, I'm not sure you're necessarily getting a good score. And that's the tricky thing, can you see? I think two hearts plus one, three hearts is making. So if I was, if North South are vulnerable on this one, three clubs doubled, I think is reasonable. And 200 could get you the top score. Um, you know, 200 gives you the top score. Ruben, you're right, the double tells you clubs are horrible, but you know they're not that horrible because there's only four to the jack. So, um, and don't forget, you've got the chance, the, what you think is a genuine chance that someone might have an ace doubleton in spades. Um, 
I think that's really tricky. And do you know, you've seen me double, I mean, we, we uh, I think it was l not last week, but the week before where we doubled two diamonds or three diamonds or whatever it is and they made it. I do not mind doubling people and then making it. I really don't. And in double annua, you really should have done that at least once, if not four times. You really should, because I want you to be doubling in, in the whole of the Jan month of January, probably about, I don't know, I'd love you to double 50 times and get five of them wrong. Mm, okay, 25 times and get five of them wrong. That's not unreasonable. You know, and then that's 80%, which is good enough for me. So I would expect in January to at least double three people and them to make it. Does that make sense? Okay, in the other months, I want you to do the same, but I want you to really try hard to double in uh, in January. So, um, I'm just gonna change things slightly here. Okay, so let's look at another one that we were sent in. Um, again, this is a, just a judgment one, really, because but I want you, I would prefer, I would have preferred you to have doubled and things, things make at least once or twice. Because, because as I say, when they're vulnerable, and this is this hand, east, west are vulnerable here. You're sitting with the north hand, okay? Um, you're thinking that in a part score hand, now I'm going to give you the auction that originally David, it says it was sent in by David, David Lampert. Um, we're, we're sure the auction didn't go like this, but this is what it was suggested. And so we'll just do it first. So your partner opens a week two in spades. Okay. And there's a three heart overcall. <clears throat> okay. Now for me, this is interesting because if I'd only had three spades here, so if I had three cards in spades and, and I'd need another high card really here, because David took the view uh, on a slightly different auction, to be fair to him, um, that he wanted to go for 200. We're definitely not going for game here. Um, I know it's a, I know it's a, you're bidding to the level of the fit there for spades, but I'm not keen on it on this particular type of hand. Um, because it's, it doesn't look likely that four spades is making. That's a fair enough point, Susan. I agree that, um, having hands sent in are much more difficult to take in. I agree. The, the, the problem I find that sometimes with just the set hands is that it People just seem to think that they are contrived, but I do agree that, that it, is, it is easier with the set hands. And I will continue to do that generally. The first three weeks of the, of the month, I will be looking at the equivalent of seminar and then the last two look, trying to get people to send hands in. For me, this is three spades aiming to double four hearts. Okay, so the problem is, so bidding to the level of your fit on this hand is all well and good, and I don't mind it. And in fact, if you watch my pairs game, uh, which was recorded, I did not bid to the level of the fit on, the, on a particular hand because of the vulnerability, and it turned out that I was wrong on the hand. It would have been better if I had. Here, though, it's hard to, I mean, if your partner has the ace of spades, there's a very big chance that they are not making game. You've got the ace and king of hearts, you've got the king of diamonds that you can lead at some point, surely you are going to be taking four hearts down a lot. And there's no reason to think that you're making four spades. Your king and queen of diamonds and king of club, queen of clubs could be useless. So I don't expect to make four spades and I don't think the opponent's going to make four hearts. So I don't think four spades looks right. However, the idea is I would be very keen on defending against four hearts and I might put a double on it. It's close because again, if your partner hasn't got the ace of spades, at this vulnerability, at this vulnerability, okay, remember, if they're not bidding four hearts, you want to be in three spades making, okay? 
You want to be in three spades making if they don't bid four hearts. You don't want to be in four spades going down, and that's the crucial thing on this hand. Okay, so, um, yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, so I would just bid three spades here, and I think that would finish the auction. If it goes four hearts, let's say it does go four hearts, I don't think it should do, um, and it comes back round to you, Again, I think this is close. <clears throat> I love to be aggressive at this at this vulnerability. So I'm quite happy if South has opened on King Queen to six and nothing else. Now, are you sure you're taking four hearts off? Okay, this vulnerability, if I'm honest, if my partner does Queen Jack 10 to six spades and nothing else, I'm sort of quite happy. So and even when your partner has the ace, sometimes they'll have a void, okay? But as it's double annui and it's the last day, we'll put a double on, okay? But I'm not sure about it. Okay, let's open up the hands um, and let's just do some passes to finish. So on the given hand, the result was three hearts doubled and making, okay? And I felt that there wasn't really a way of getting it down. I don't think East would have raised to four hearts here. Um, I, I think more likely, um, it would have gone probably two spades, three hearts, three spades. And I think that would probably win the auction, to be honest. Would West bid again? Do you fancy another bid with West? I don't know. I don't think so. So I think that's the way the, the auction should probably finish. And as you can see, I think probably you're going to lose one spade, one diamond, and two clubs. Okay, and the reason is your queens and jacks are no good in defence. Uh, you know, are not brilliant in defence. And I think it, quite often you'll find when the big fits, you've got a nine card fit against a ten card fit. You've got a nine card fit against a ten card fit. Um, you've got nine, so it's, uh, the law of total tricks is, 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 is a very, the law of total tricks is what bidding to the level your fit is based about. And it works brilliantly. Most of the time it looks brilliantly. Four, three, three, three hands tend to be, you've got to be careful on. And so that is what's happened here. There's slightly less tricks than are expected if that makes sense. There's nine tricks for north-south and nine tricks for east-west. You can't quite stop Declara. Um, Declara, if you don't lead diamonds, can discard a diamond on the second round of spades. But if you do lead diamonds, I think Declara in, in, four, in hearts can establish diamonds. So, but the question that David had was, what would you lead against a heart doubled contract? So let's just do it again. Um, let's do two spades, three hearts, three spades, four hearts, which I don't like from East at all. Um, the queen of spades looks useless there. So. so let's say we double it. What would you lead? Don't worry about working out what the best lead is on the given contract. What do you think you would lead from that hand against four hearts doubled? So we're looking at the north hand. And to be honest, it could be a spade lead, it could be a diamond lead. And bearing both of those in mind, I like the ace of hearts because it could also be a trump lead. So the ace of hearts allows you to see dummy. If you should carry on leading trumps, you can carry on leading trumps. If you should switch to spades, you can switch to spades. And if you need to play diamonds, you can play diamonds. Because you've got the ace and king of hearts, I think that makes sense. Now, as soon as you play the ace of hearts, you know that dummy can't get any roughs, or don't think it can, because of course you know that, remember, Declare has got a singleton spade because your partner's shown six on his opening bid. So after the ace of hearts, you could choose to switch, but I'm pretty sure that a good declarer should be able to establish diamonds if you try to switch to diamonds here. Um, so let's say it goes ace of hearts, 
I mean, let's just do it. If you led the ace of hearts here, to Clara can unblock the 10 if necessary. Uh, and you switch to diamonds. Declara now, if Declara plays a spade, the defense will make a diamond. Um, okay. And I think the defense, you know, the problem is though, um, Declara might just play a diamond back like that. Okay. I don't know what you do now. Um, let's say you win it. And the defence, remember, can't switch to clubs without giving a trick away. So I think probably you're just going to play a spade. I don't know what you can do, really. <laughs> play a spade, I guess. You could have played trumps. No, let's, let's say you play trumps. Okay, king of trumps. And another trump. Okay, but that's trumps drawn, and of course the diamonds are established. Okay, so if you if you do that, um, Declara might make the spade. So I think you have to play a spade. Let's go back. <laughs> so let's do. It. So there you go, ace of spades. But you can see that Declara is going to be able to establish those diamonds easily. There's nothing you can do. Okay, um, so you probably play another spade. And Declara can just rough the diamonds good. Okay. So Declara makes relatively comfortably three hearts. He goes one off in four hearts, of course. Um, he does go one off in four hearts. Which is a good save for East West, amazingly. Um, so Declara makes nine tricks. He's one off. Um, it's 200, and that's the key here. So it's not a good save. That's the key, the vulnerability. So the previous hand, if we took three clubs, one off, that's 100. Not as good as a part score. Here, four hearts double minus one is a disaster for East West. And as I say, East would not bid four hearts. I can't exaggerate that enough. East would not bid four hearts. The question I've got though is, should North really double? I don't mind it, but it's aggressive. I just need you to know it's aggressive because at this vulnerability, I love my partner to preempt aggressively himself. And so if I throw the queen of spades in the south hand instead of the ace, okay, if the queen of spades and I give the ace to east, which is more likely on the auction, I'm quite comfortable for my partner to open that, an aggressive two spade opener. And so now um, things would not be so nice, I'm afraid. You would end up the opponent's quite happily making four hearts. So I think, you know, if you like to be aggressive at non-vulnerable against vulnerable uh, dis uh, vulnerability, then you really do need to be careful when you're doubling in this. Because I, I don't want my partner not opening on weak hands in the South situation. OK, um, well, I, I agree uh, very much with a couple of people's um, Someone asking about three no trumps. Um, that's not, it might work on the hand. There's not really enough tricks though. So in three no trumps, you, you'd, if I, I can just take you back, um, well, I'm going to put another one. I don't think there's going to be enough tricks there, um, Trevor. You know, so even if you do establish your spades, um, they're just going to knock out the hearts and you haven't got the aces beside it. So, um, let me just uh, quickly put that up there so you can see it. You'll, you'll notice that in three no trumps, if they just lead hearts, you win, you play a spade, knock out the spade, but they play another heart. OK, and they've still got the two aces. So although you will make seven tricks, you just haven't got the strength to make three no trumps. OK. All right, so I'm just getting up the hand evaluation. I, I agree uh, in many ways with um, with Sue, Susan and, and, uh, and the others there in terms of um, it being di more difficult to analyse random hands sent in. Those ones were, were much more tricky than some of them, so I, I will try to be more... I, I need more hands sent in, I think, is the answer, and then I can be more picky and choosy. So, obviously, I use the hands that I set to make specific points to make specific points, hands that are sent in are going to be less specific. 
Um, so they're less easy to learn from, but we see things live and in action. And so getting a balance between the two, I think, is, is a reasonable thing. OK, let's go through this auction again then. Um, it was one spade, if we remind ourselves. Pass, one no trump. Pass, two spades. So I'll just put it up and then we'll try and analyse it. And so why would you want to do this? Well, the reason you do this is as a defender. Um, as a defender, you try to work out what the hands are. So it went one spade from north, obviously natural. One no trump from south, six to nine points. Two spades from north. So that's the first important bit. What does two spades show? And two spades should promise six spades. Should promise six spades. Really important that, OK, with only five, you just leave it in one no trump. You'd have a balanced hand or you'd have a second suit. So it promises six spades. So at this point, if South has two spades, I think South is happy. OK, South doesn't need to introduce, even if he's got six hearts, doesn't need to introduce them. He has a fit. So for me, South is saying, partner, you know I'm weak. I'm six to nine points, but I have a very long heart suit. So it's six or more hearts. And I don't really like your spades. OK, so South probably is in the six or seven point region. OK, and almost always three hearts would be passed out. So why on earth has North bid four hearts? Well, of course, North's two spades was a weak bid. But imagine North has a fit with hearts. Okay, if North has a fit with hearts, well, then he can reevaluate. So let's have a look at the two hands. And you'll see it's a perfectly reasonable auction. Okay, so have a look at them. And it's a brilliant auction to the correct contract. Nobody's made a wrong bid. So it went one spade from North. One no trump from south, just six points. Mustn't bid two hearts in an auction. As it happens in this case, it would work OK because you want to get to four hearts. But one spade, one no trump's partner, I am weak. Two spades from north. OK. Remember, one no trump is denying a four card major that you could have bid at the one level. That you could have bid at the one level. OK, so one spade, one no trump, two spades. North is thinking, OK, you've got six to nine points, partner. I'll sign off in two spades. Again, that is a good bid. OK, promising six spades. OK, and usually, again, North is thinking we're going to play in two spades. But South looks at his hand and with ace, with a really weak heart suit, South may just leave it in two spades. But with ace, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, you can be sure of three tricks. OK, now. It is possible that partner could have been 6-3-3-1 with a singleton heart and you'll be in a worse contract, but it's perfectly reasonable to bid three hearts. And most of the time you'll expect to be passed. But look at the North hand. The North hand has just been transformed. North has said he's got a weak hand and his hand is transformed. He's got a five loser hand with king, queen to three. And he works out that it, as long as you've just got you could, for example, sometimes you might have just chosen to respond on, I don't know, ace jack to seven hearts and not a, not a point outside. So just five points, um, all in hearts, seven hearts. You decided to bid one no trump to keep the bidding open. And that's often what it will be based around. Uh, I mean, particularly when you bid a minor in this auction. OK, all right. If you've got a minor in this auction, it'll usually be a seven card suit. OK. Um, and so again, so it is very rare. So if this hand had bid three diamonds, interesting. If this hand, if South had bid three diamonds, ooh, I think you'd probably, it's very, very close because a lot of the time your partner bids a minor in this auction. Okay. The minor will be seven cards in length, but I think probably passing three diamonds is normal. David saying North isn't weak. He's in the 15, 12 to 15 point range. He doesn't believe game is going to make. That's all. 
So Dave, when, when North rebids two spades, he does not believe that most of the time partner bids one no trump that game will make. So that's the crucial thing here. Okay, North does not believe that game is gonna make, but then when his partner bids three hearts, he gets excited. Okay, interesting. Yeah, three diamonds is interesting. I think you'd probably pass three diamonds if South we bid three diamonds. Um, five diamonds isn't going to make that offer. Okay, I agree. Three hearts is close. It's ace, ten, nine, eight, seven, six that make me want to bid it. Okay, so that was the um, the guess, the guess, the bids thing. Um, what have we got left? Well, we've got a winner. We've got the winner was. Una or Una Radcliffe, our prize winner. And I've got two cards here, the ace and the four. We'll see what seat she's going to be in. I'll give it a little shuffle. If it's ace, it's with me. If it's four, it's not. There you go, Una. You'll have the chance to partner me um, on our Wednesday teams, the last Wednesday of February. Okay, on the last Wednesday of February. So I'll send you a message. Okay, I finish with the bidding quiz and then I'll do a little bit of uh, beginner's stuff, okay? That is true, James, it is true. That's our my Mr. Our Mr. Bridge uh, cards, which are still, uh, I think I'll finish now, but we'll see. But Mr. Bridge is still, still selling a little bit of stuff, so he's still going, but I'll come to that another time when, when we're ready for it. So one club by North, one no trump by your partner, two clubs, one club by North, one no trump from your partner, two clubs, and it is your bid, and you have to choose what your bid is. And as usual, you can get the answer on the website as a non-member or member, and good luck with that. So one club, one no trump from partner, two clubs, and it's your bid. So thanks for your company. Uh, maybe see some of you on Wednesday. Don't forget the offer of the week this week. The offer of the week is uh, the teams at half price. So if you fancy that, the offer of the week is is the teams. So um, I think it might be on there. There you go. Teams on BBO. So uh, do do join us for that if you fancy. Um, and uh, other, other than that, uh, enjoy the week. Hopefully see, obviously don't forget as a member, you don't need to buy that. You get it free of charge, but uh, uh, as a non-member, you get that option this week. So if you want to join us for the beginners, that's what we're doing now. The beginners, we are choosing which suit to open. So we are choosing which suit to open. So let's do that now. So which suit do we open? We open our longest suit. So if you've chosen to open, and we said we needed about 12 points, we need to know which suit to open. And the important thing is you open in the longest suit because you're trying to find out which suit as a partnership, which suit as a partnership you've got the most trumps in. So we start by showing the suit that we like the most, i.e. the one we have most trumps. If you have two suits of the same length, then what you do is you open in the higher ranking suit. Don't forget the ranking order from, from clubs down below to diamonds, hearts and spades in alphabetical order from the bottom. C, D, H, S. Okay, so you open in the higher suit. There is a one exception to this. So if you have two suits of the same length, you open in the higher suit. There's just one exception. And that is when you've got two four card suits of the same rank. So what do I mean by that? Two four card majors or two four card minors. So if you have two four card majors or two four card minors, you open in the lower suit. So if you have two four card majors or two four card minors, you open in the lower suit. But other than that, you open in the higher suit. Sometimes you will have three suits of the same length. We try to ignore that, but that's actually the subject that is going on, on in February on the site. Four, 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 one hands, but we're not gonna deal with that here. That'll come up later. So remember, open in your longest suit, or if you've got two suits of the same length, open the higher, with the one exception that we've just seen there. 
Okay, so those are the rules for choosing your opening bid. Okay, so let's have a look at some examples. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So here you are, I'm going to ask you to make the first bid. So what you have to do is count your points up, see if you've got enough points to open. You do still have to remember that there might be a weak no trump phone thrown in here. So remember if you've got 12 to 14 points in a balanced hand, we choose not to open a suit. We open one no trump, so don't forget that. Okay, I'll uh, just slip that one in there before we come to that hand. So 16 is what you'd have announced if you were playing, um, sorry, with two five card suits, someone asking, always the higher. Okay, so remember, with two suits of the same length, so you might have two six card suits, you'd open the higher. The only time you don't open the higher is with two four card suits of the same rank, two majors or two minors. So here we'd open one heart, of course. Okay, you'd have opened, you'd have, you'd have announced 16, as it were. Here you open one heart. Okay, so here we've got a balanced hand, but we've got 16 points. Okay, a balanced hand with 16 points. So we're not opening one no trump, we're too strong to that. What we said last week was we would open one of a suit and try to bid no trumps later. Okay, so here we've got two suits of the same length, hearts and diamonds. They're not of the same rank. What I mean by that is you have a major suit and a minor suit. A major suit and a minor suit, so you would open the higher. One heart again. Okay. Generally, you're interested, much more interested in playing in majors and bidding majors than you are in minors. And that's why we tend to bid the higher there. Okay, how about this one? Once again, I've given you 16 points. This one is not balanced for those of you interested there because you have two doubletons. So it's not quite balanced. So we are going to bid a suit. We've got 16 points anyway. So which suit do we open? Well, this one's slightly awkward on the screen because um, the suits look a similar length, don't they? Because, because they seem to be the same length in length, as it were, but there are five diamonds there and four hearts. So we do open this one diamond. We do open this one diamond. Length is your strength, as it were. So we open one diamond. Okay, it does look a bit odd this one, but it's important to get into your hat to head always length is strength. Bid your longest suit first. Okay, not your strongest, your longest suit. Okay, because when you come to play the hands, you'll find that having more trumps makes a lot of difference. When you are playing mini bridge, if you've tried that on the software or tried it live before, you will find that you should only choose a trump suit if you've got eight trumps between you and it's important for the partnership to know how many each one's got and usually the first suit is going to be the longest one. Okay, how about this one? Well here of course it's important to count the points because this is the trap I set but I did ask you to predict it at the start of this little quiz and that of course is the 12 to 14 points in a balanced hand. So this hand is balanced because it has no really long suit and it's got n only one doubleton. So it's a hand without a singleton or a void so it has at least two cards in every suit but it only has one doubleton. So it's a balanced hand, it is 12 to 14 points. It has 14 so it opens at one no trump. It's a beautiful descriptive bid. It says, partner, I don't really particularly fancy any of the suits. I'm relatively balanced and I've got 12 to 14 points. Okay, how about this one? Five, five, lovely 14 points. Okay, so although it's 12 to 14 points, we are not considering one no trump. A one no trump opening shows two things. It shows the number of points you have, but it also says that you have a balanced type of hand. This kind of hand really wants to play with spades or hearts as trump, doesn't it? Okay, and so of course we open the higher suit. With five, five you open the higher suit because you are gonna bid both of them. You want to tell your partner that you're pretty sure you wanna play in spades or hearts. So you open in the higher and then bid again in the lower. So one spade, later on hopefully we'll get a chance to bid, we will bid two hearts, okay? 
by basically making a bid for both suits, as it were. So we've just opened the higher when we've got spades in heart. Why am I not opening the higher with this hand? Well, let's have a look. We've got 18 points. We have two suits of the same rank. They're both majors. OK, so because I've got a balanced hand, my job is to show my strength. So I want whenever I've got a balanced hand, I I want to bid no trumps at some point. So I'm going to choose to open in a suit. But then I'm going to rebid in no trumps. I've got 18 points, so I'm going to rebid with a jump. Maybe maybe it goes um, one spade and my partner bids two clubs, but I'm not going to open a spade, by the way. So a heart and two clubs partner. And then I would rebid no trumps, three no trumps, partner. I've got so many points, you're not going to believe it. 18 or 19 points here. OK, so if you're planning to rebid no trumps, you want to give yourself the best chance of finding a fit. With the 5-5, five five, I wasn't going to bid no trumps at all. I've got a really distributional hand. I'm bidding both suits here. The reason we open one heart, the lower of the two majors, when I've got four cards in each, one of the only exceptions is because it allows partner to respond one spade if partner's got four spades. Whereas if I choose a one spade opener, my partner has to bid at the two level to show a suit. So we're bidding one heart because I, I want to find out straight away if partner likes spades. And if he does, let's go for spades. If he doesn't like spades, then we're going to finish in no trumps. And we get that straight away. Whereas if I open one spade, it can be a little bit difficult for my partner to show me that he likes hearts. He might not feel he has the strength to bid two hearts. So that's the reason behind this exception. You don't have to worry about it too much. OK, you don't have to worry about the reasons the rule will govern you well, as it were. So you're bidding the lowest of two four card suits of the same rank. So two majors, one heart, two minors, one club. That's the only exception. Every other time you have two suits of equal length and you're planning to open a suit, you open the higher of those suits. OK, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, that is choosing your the right suit when you have decided to open the bidding in a suit contract. OK, so don't forget, you can see all of those lessons on the software. So if you're on our site or you want to join our site, you're welcome to. And all of my lessons here, we are going to we are going to create them eventually. We're going to edit them into little little tips. Um, bear with us on that. That's taking a bit longer because we've had a few staff changes here. But the important thing is, is the software is there on our site for any any member to, to use, uh, particularly novice members. Remember, novice member for just four ninety nine a month. You can use that, and my lessons are going to go hand in hand with that. And if you've ever got any questions, please do send them in. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, um, and see you for another one soon. Thank you.